its rules. In Baghdad, there's a good possibility that a bomb will go off at any given time. Uh, sometimes uh, when we were filming and interviewing people there, we'd uh, suddenly hear this deafening explosion and then uh, the sirens would begin to wail. Another area had been hit by either a bomb or rocket and we'd pack up and rush to the scene. When uh, we'd get there, we'd see a gaping hole in the ground and shreds of human flesh. A few survivors uh, would be milling about, either dazed or crying their eyes out. They'd say that uh, there had been another suicide attack. Security was tight on the road to Karbala. The American soldiers really restricted our filming. Even in Baghdad, we'd start talking with them and uh, they'd take our IDs. They'd uh, photocopy them and take notes. Only after that would they allow us to film certain areas. We talked with a um, number of American soldiers and uh, found out that uh, a lot of them were contractors who just wanted to end their stand safely and get back home uh, as soon as possible. Uh, at the places where the Americans had set up checkpoints, a group of kids would usually uh, gather and joke around with them. These children are accustomed to war. They grow up uh, seeing bombings, death, executions, and uh, funerals on a daily basis. Even uh, their playgrounds are filled with soldiers. Uh, as you can see in this picture, by yourself, see it. Uh, there are American soldiers uh, in front of their houses. Here, look at it. Uh, the children and the American soldier there. The people are caught in the middle between the Americans and terrorists like Al-Qaeda. They don't have any choice. Um, so, like it or not, um, they are living in a veritable pressure cooker. Uh, they'll eventually suffocate. They become poor and lose their hope in the future. They can't send their children to school. Those with businesses can't run them. Farmers can't work in their fields. They don't even feel safe in their own homes. Even journalists aren't safe there. They are frequently shot at. Both sides consider them fair game. Uh, I mean, uh, those who launch terrorist operations on mosques and the occupiers as well. Uh, 
uh, it's really risky for journalists uh, in Iraq. A journalist can lose his or her life at any given moment. Mm, during the 22 days it took to film our first program, we traveled throughout the country. Uh, we went to Kirkuk, Mosul, Fallujah, Karbala, and Baghdad, all around. During the 90s, a lot of journalists died while they were covering conflicts throughout the world. If we compare those figures with the ones taken from the 80s, during the Iran-Iraq war, for example, which lasted for eight and a half years, the figures in the 90s were really high. Back in the 80s, the number of journalists killed was really not much of an issue. At least I don't remember anyone making an issue of it. The number of journalists uh, who have lost their lives in the past four years is uh, staggering. It is said to be around 190. Mm, even uh, the Vietnam War wasn't uh, as dangerous for journalists. So uh, why have the numbers risen so sharply? Well, really, why? Well, for one thing, the enemy is no longer the guy who is facing you at the front. Uh, both sides are targeting the journalists. That's because um, they believe that if journalists get killed, the conflict will be given greater coverage. So they are actually using the journalists as propaganda too. Uh, then the two sides uh, start shooting at each other. We knew the hostile sides, but suddenly a journalist was kidnapped and it was... That's, that's when some uh, previously unknown group makes an announcement that it's responsible. That puts it in the limelight. Kidnapping a journalist gives it instant fame. When I went to Iraq for the second time, for our second program, I quickly saw that things had gotten a lot worse. The situation in Iraq was uh, deteriorating uh, day by day. The clashes were intensifying. Large numbers of people were dying and living conditions were deplorable, much worse than they were last year or last month or even yesterday. The battle lines aren't clear in Iraq. There's definitely a war going on, but it has no clear battle lines. The whole mess is complicated and blurred. It's really a dirty war. I don't think it's the Iraqis fighting among themselves. Uh, I think the people causing the trouble are other countries that have scores to settle with each other and have simply made Iraq their battleground. Journalists are wearing flak jackets these days because uh, the areas they have to go in which the incidents occur are really dangerous. In fact, it's becoming increasingly difficult uh, to even go to those places. American soldiers won't let the journalists in to film those sites, like uh, they used to. In different places, you can see signs uh, forbidding picture taking. In fact, in those areas, you can risk being shot 
by just lifting your camera. If uh, an American soldier tells you not to film, then uh, you'd better not unless uh, you want to risk getting shot. One incident is really hard to forget. There was a guy who was screaming in a hospital. He yelled. He wanted to know how it could be possible for one Muslim to shoot another in this holy place. If things were in the hands of the Iraqis, such a war would never have even occurred. These people have been living with each other for hundreds of years, and they have had problems before, but they have never wound up in the bloodbath like this. It was uh, hard to find anybody, any being, on the streets in Mosul after 5 uh, or 6 o'clock uh, p.m. Uh, it seemed like a deserted city because it was uh, Mosul. One night, uh, we went out for dinner at a riverside restaurant in Mosul. As it turned out, uh, once we got there, we were forced to spend the night there in, in the boondocks. So first, we checked into a nearby hotel, and then went to the restaurant and ordered our food. Less than five minutes later, an Iraqi came and started talking to our driver. He said that he was a reporter as well, and told us that we should leave because uh, it was dangerous. We refused to take him seriously. So he came back in another five minutes and told us that he really knew what he was talking about. He told us to leave because uh, that place was not safe. He told us that uh, we should have our driver take our food to our hotel. Our driver agreed with what uh, he was saying, so we got up and uh, left. The driver brought us uh, food and we ate in our hotel rooms. We went back to that place some time later. As it turned out, we had the same driver. He told us that a group of kidnappers had been caught and they confessed that they had planned to kidnap a group of Turkish journalists in Mosul on a certain date. He said that they had gone to where they had heard that the journalists were only to discover that uh, they had left uh, five minutes earlier. Just imagine that only five minutes earlier. On our third uh, visit to Iraq for our third program, the situation had notably uh, deteriorated. Iraqis woke to the sound of an explosion every day. And uh, that was just the beginning. Each day, there were numbers of bombings each incident resulted in heavy casualties. In fact, uh, these bombings had uh, become so common, nobody thought anything about people losing their lives in such incidents, and papers no longer even bothered uh, to mention them. So the Iraqi people have been forced to accept the ugly and savage uh, realities of war. On our uh, first night in Baghdad, the streets were deserted by 5 or 6 p.m. And it was really hard finding a safe, um, safe hotel. On a number of occasions, uh, we couldn't even find anything to eat. And it was often hard finding a place to sleep. We sometimes had to work till midnight. Despite uh, all the difficulties, my friends and I dealt with the situation. No one posed a burden on anyone else. 
we all pulled together and a spirit of cooperation prevailed the whole time we spent in Iraq, filming and interviewing a bunch of people from one end of the country to the other. The result was a quality program. Something has happened nearly every day for years now. In fact, uh, when a day passes without some type of catastrophe occurring, people are really surprised. They all wonder why nothing happened that day. Uh, they all naturally wonder if it isn't the calm before the storm. I mean, uh, assume for a moment that there has just been a bombing. The dead are scattered all over the place and some cars are on fire. The police uh, arrive on the scene and cordon off the area. The fires are put out and the dead are removed. The rubble is cleared and carted away. People stand by watching as soon as the place has been cleaned up and is reopened. You can once again hear street peddlers playing and selling CDs of resistance songs. Despite uh, the turmoil in Iraq, the people are still warm and friendly. Uh, it's like I say, uh, they're simply...